All right, this is going to be a fairly lengthy video explaining some of the features of the new tricked out blue box that uh, I have here. It has the 16 button mem membrane keypad on the front, uh, on and off toggle switch, a uh, LED for special mode status, and a eighth inch mono earphone jack connected to this old Western Electric 500 earpiece with the varistory glue for a speaker for phone freaking. On the inside is an Arduino Micro uh, from Radio Shack, very tiny form factor, though not the smallest. It's based on the Leonardo architecture, and you can see um, here's the headphone jack, a coupling capacitor, some dropping resistors for the tones to cut the volume down, battery, and everything else just pretty much plugs on the board that's connected with some um, foam pads here to the, uh, to the back of this plastic box. The membrane keypad comes through here and just plugs on the back. So for a, for a prototype, it's, it's fine. It's fine for some software development, but eventually I'd like to get it into a little better box. So that's a quick tour of the hardware. Let's look at some of the new software features that have been added to the box. First of all, we'll turn it on and it'll play some power beeps that you can hear. And um, now it's powered up in what I call normal mode. Normal mode just means manual mode. When the box is first loaded with the software, the Arduino is loaded with the software via the USB port. It powers up and initializes in MF or multi-frequency mode at the uh, shortest tone duration of 75 milliseconds, and it comes up in manual mode. So in this mode, I can just press the various um, MF tones. So those are the standard ones, key pulse and start, and then the digitones. It also plays um, the special MF tones, ST1P, ST2P, or KP2, and ST3P, and the D key plays the trunk seizure key, or the 2600 key. So that's all fairly standard. So I can toggle the, uh, the modes by holding and pressing A, which I'll show in a moment. I can toggle the duration by holding down B. And now that low to high beep indicates that we're playing these at the longer duration. And that affects manual and also the memory playback modes that we'll look at in a few minutes here. So we'll go back to the short mode. The C key toggles in and out of the memory playback mode. So if I press and hold that, the uh, blue LED lights to indicate that we are in memory playback mode. And now, the uh, 12 keys, 1 through 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, star, 0, and pound, can each store uh, a digit sequence of up to 32 digits, including seizure and special other tones. Um, so that can be stored and then played back from this mode, uh, from holding down C here and going into the playback mode. Uh, D uh, simply plays again the trunk seizure tone, the 2600, in this mode. And if I press and hold it, we go into red box mode. Red box mode uh, plays nickel, dime, and quarter payphone tones. But a special feature is if you go down a row, it'll play two coins of each denomination. Two nickels, two dimes, two quarters, three nickels, Three dimes, three quarters, and four of each on the bottom row. That's kind of cool. So if this still worked, it would be an easy way of just adding in multiple coins without having to hit the key every time. So uh, red mode, uh, all these special modes and tone lengths and durations are stored in the double EEPROM that's inside of the chip in the Arduino. So it's non-volatile, so if I turn off the, off the uh, box and turn it back on again, powers up, the blue light's still on, and we are still in, we're still in red box mode. So it does remember the state. The only uh, exception to that, I think, is if you're in playback mode and do a power cycle, it'll come back up in, in normal mode. It, it does reset on a power cycle. So let's get out of playback mode. Um, oops, sorry, red box mode back in manual. So this is the MF mode. Now the second mode, if we press and hold A, will we'll rotate through the five various modes. Second mode is DTMF mode. 
hear a single beep indicating it's the first mode up from the MF mode. And now all 16 keys will play uh, the 16 standard DTMF tones. And um, that's basically about it. Uh, there's also memory playback mode can be entered from this mode as, as uh, it can in all the modes and you can also toggle the durations on, um, on DTMF as well. And those duration settings are shared among all the modes that uh, depend on MF digit timing for, um, for, uh, for their operation. Now in, this, uh, in DTMF mode there's no seizure key since there is no trunk seizure associated with DTMF so the D key just plays that Autovan um, D, D code as, as does all the fourth column DTMF tones. All right, if I press and hold A again, you'll hear two beeps, so we'll go into the next mode. This mode is uh, uh, CCITT number five mode. It's identical to the MF mode. All the tones are the same. One exception to that, however, is the, um, is the D key. Instead of playing 2600, it'll play a, a CCITT number five signaling system clear forward signal followed by a seizure signal that's used to seize international trunks. But all the other tones, exactly the same. Memory mode the same. You can still go into red box mode from this mode directly by pressing ND. Everything else is the same. Just that one trunk seizure tone is different. All right, so we'll press and hold it and go to the next setting, which is very unique never seen a blue box with this. It, it's a signaling system number four system uh, box. And SS4 is kind of a unique system. It encodes the digits by using two tones to encode binary zero and one. And then it's got a nibble or four bits that are defined for each one of the digit keys and some of the special function keys. And it also uses uh, another combination of uh, 2040 and 2400 tones tones for the supervisory functions on the box as well. It sounds kind of, well, it sounds extremely musical. It's, it's kind of a cool sounding mode. I'll, I'll play a few tones. So all these are the digitones, of course. Um, the, uh, the D uh, key, like the other modes, is the trunk seizure key, so it plays the clear forward followed by the uh, C's tone, which is different from C5, kind of a unique set of tones. And thereafter, you have to play a KP tone, which is actually a trunk seizure tone in, in the SS4 system. So it combines the functionality of providing the uh, start indication for the digit sequence and it also seizes the trunk at the same time. There's two. There's KP1, there's an equivalent KP1 and a KP2 signal. They sound like this. In fact, it sounds just like the seizure except the second tone is shorter. Uh, this is the uh, KP2, which can be used to bring an uh, uh, inward operator on the line. And then there's some other and the pound key is equivalent to the MF start key. It's the end of, end of dialing. It's all zeros. You can hear the four uh, low tones indicating four zero bits. Very cool mode, and it sounds especially cool in memory playback mode. Final mode. Uh, the fourth, uh, the four beeps, is the uh, 2600 dial pulse mode. This mode was made famous by Joe Ingressia, the famous blind phone freak who could whistle uh, at 2600 by beeping out sequences of digits into old step tandems and place free long distance calls with really nothing more than a whistle. So this just does the same thing that Joe did, but in a more sophisticated and more convenient way. So in this mode, um, it works exactly like a telephone dial. Anything I dial, and the only digits active are one through nine and zero and the D key for the trunk seizure, uh, it'll actually play back the 2600 tone at the same make and break ratio as a standard telephone dial. 
and the light flashes along with the dial pulsing. And the D key plays the seizure. And that's about it. I mean, the other keys are not active because they really don't do anything. So, so those are the basic operating modes. So let's go back to, or we'll rotate around back to MF mode again. But now we'll go into, um, the, uh, take a look at some of the memory storage functions. To store something in memory, what we do is, uh, first of all, press and hold any one of the uh, digit keys to initiate a memory storage operation. We want to write something to memory. So we would press, for example, uh, well, you can press anything for, to start it. And so we hear a low beep and the light comes on. Now we're in memory mode. Now I can proceed to enter in digits in the signaling system that I currently have selected. And after each one of the tones associated with that signal, I'll hear a short chirp to remind us that we're in, uh, in that um, in that memory record mode. So we're in MF mode now. So we'll do KP. So you hear the tones themselves, but you hear that little cheep afterwards. So I've got something stored in, into uh, the RAM buffer right now. If I want to write that out to a memory, all I have to do is press and hold one of these 12 keys that are associated with the memories. So we'll store that KP131 start to here. And now if I go into memory mode and play it back, plays back at the current duration. Now I can change the duration even inside playback mode. Now it plays back at the, at the slower speed. And I can do the same in DTMF mode. The, the function is exactly the same. So let's get out of memory mode. Let's go up to some of the kind of interesting modes. Here's the SS4 mode. This is kind of cool to hear in memory. We'll see how the record function works here. So we press and hold um, any one of the keys again to initiate it. So now we're in memory record mode. So let's do a, first of all, a trunk seizure. And then a key pulse, which is actually the seizure tone. And then we'll dial, um, I don't know, zero. And finally, the start key. Those tones are all different. They, they sound very similar, but the bit sequences are different. This is the start e equivalent, all zeros. So now we've recorded it. Now we'll save it. Save to uh, memory 9. Could have been any of the other 12 keys. Press and hold C. Play it back. Do that again. Sounds cool. And we'll get out of memory playback mode. Let's go up to the dial pulse mode. Give that a try. So let's go, we'll record by Pressing 1, and now we'll dial the Project MF phone number. Get a little chirp there to remind us we're in memory mode. Now we're done, so we'll save it to memory 0. After it dials, I keep holding it and it saves it. Now if I go in memory mode, plays back the sequence. I could have also put a trunk seizure tone in that sequence at any point. Cool thing is you can have a mixture of different toning signaling systems in different memories. Um, and because the actual tone mode or trunk system mode is stored along with the uh, digit information. So I have a couple of pre-stored here. I'll demonstrate how that works. So again, we've got the 12 memories. We'll play back some that I pre-stored. It's 
So the slow mode, let's speed that up. That's MF, of course. Seizure. And we'll do DTMF. Uh, this, I think, is um, a C, a CCITT5 with the uh, unique clear forward and seizure signal at the beginning. This one's the uh, signaling system 4 or CCITT4 with uh, the seizure and the key pulse at the very beginning. And finally, the dial pulse. The seizure that it was saved. And then the, uh, the trunk dial pulses for the old step cantons, which no longer exist. But it's still fun to, fun to listen to and play with. Joe, would have, Joe and Gracia would have loved this. So that's a quick tour of the functionality. Uh, I'm going to hope, hopefully get this into a better enclosure soon and hopefully release this out to the world at some point as it's quite easy to build and quite easy to upload the code to. Uh, very little wiring involved. So hope you enjoyed the demo and um, that's about it.